Hello and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to talk about the different reporting capabilities and options that we have here inside pipe drive and some uh, considerations that you might need to make when setting up your pipe drive account, because based on how some of these report wor reports work, it kind of means you need to set up pipe drive in a certain way or, or use it in a specific way to make sure the reporting and the data is accurate. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to get updates about new videos about pipe drive. And uh, if you have have any questions or want some support with Pipedrive setup, training for your team and help with automation, check out details in the description below this video to learn more about my consulting services. So I'm going to start here by looking at the dashboard. This, as the name suggests, is kind of just like an overview. It's where you can come to see a snapshot of what's going on in your Pipedrive account. Obviously, you make sure you select your time frame first of all. Um, check the time frame you're looking at. Check the pipeline that you're looking at as well. Um, certain metrics will only be visible on a specific pipeline, like conversion rate metrics, um, but you can view all pipelines as well. And you can toggle your pipeline to either show everyone, uh, a specific team, if you have the teams set up, or an individual as well. So if you want to track one individual person's progress, you can even just look at that one person, see you know how many activities are they doing, deals one, uh, and that kind of thing. So this is your snapshot, this is your bird's eye view. You can then click on most of these things to drill down into a report. So let's look at some of the things on this screen. Uh, deals started over here on the left. I could then, I can see, look, there's 12 here. I could click on that number 12 and it actually brings up the, the 12 deals that make up this number. Um, I could even click on the, the widget title here and it will actually then take me down into my reports where I can see more detail and some different view options for that particular metric. So clicking on these different things will, will show you um, you know, obviously uh, you know, the deals and the different reports. You can either you can also see a comparison with the previous period as well. Are you up or down compared to the previous period? Um, okay, let's uh, let's actually drill into some of the reports. So I'm coming to reports here. I'm going to go to uh, sorry progress and then reports. Let's start at the. Uh, at the sidebar here and look uh, work work our way down. So obviously again, make sure you're looking at the correct pipeline. Um, are you looking at a particular team if you have teams? And uh, check your time frame as well. And then here we have all the different reporting options. So let's talk about each of them in turn. Activities added. To be honest, I don't think I've ever looked at this report. I don't personally find it that useful. I don't know quite why I need to know about activities added. I guess it's the only th the only thing to know is that yeah, the fact that you are creating activities uh, by you know a certain amount over time, that might be useful just to know that certain activities are being created. To be honest, I find a much more useful one is activities completed because this actually tells me what's going on inside Pipedrive. Now, to get the most out of Pipedrive and to get the most out of this report, you yourself and your sales team have to be logging activities in Pipedrive. And in my experience with different clients that I've worked with, I find the activities to be one of the most underused features, which is a real shame because then you miss out on data like this. So you, I, I think the best practice is any interaction you have with a deal or a client, you should be logging some kind of activity. So if it's a phone call you're making, or even if you leave a voicemail, send an email, have a meeting, all that activity should be recorded in here. Because then it means at the end of the, the month, the quarter, the year, we can look back and see how many calls did we do? Uh, how many meetings did we do? How many proposals did we send? And to get more detail in here, you can, if you go to your settings, go to your company settings, you can even customize your activity types. So for example, I've got one here called competitor analysis. I could create one called, let's do a quote or a proposal. So I could pick this little icon, make a quote. And now that's a custom activity type that I've set up. If I check that off in my deals, that will go back to my um, activities complete. And I can actually see how many different, uh, how many quotes that I sent per month. And actually that's something I've done in my account is I have different types of call. So instead of just call here, I've actually got like an introductory call versus just a normal follow-up call. Cause I want to track those separately. I want to track how many first calls did I do versus follow-ups. So that's why I've created different activity types. So this one I do find to be really useful. You can filter this by users over time as well. Um, you're not seeing anything here, but if you have multiple users in your account, you can actually see which members of your sales team are doing more or less of certain types of activities. So it's a great way to hold people accountable, make sure they're following good process, good sales process. 
You've got emails sent and received as well. Again, I, I don't find this to be particularly useful, emails sent. Uh, I guess maybe to maintain to make sure you're maintaining a good volume of email follow-up, potentially. Um, they're not, to be honest, reports that I look at that much. We get into deals started here. Um, I like to look at this one by maybe users over time. Um, you can look at by status as well, which is quite useful. Uh, you can see, you know, how many of the deals that we started in March, you know, two are now one, one is lost. Uh, this one in April, we've got one still open. So actually, that's quite a nice way of seeing, you know, of the deals started at a certain during a certain month, how many of them have been won or lost. Um, I do quite like as well um, by users over time. And so the deal started is a useful one to make sure you are maintaining good a good volume of inbound leads. Uh, for example, you can see here we were creating lots of deals. This is just a demo account. You know, we are creating lots of deals. Um, and then there's a sudden drop off here. This is obviously going to have a, a future impact on sales. If deals started for a particular month are low, it could have a knock on effect. And so sales the next month might be low as well. So I think deal started is a good one to track to make sure you're maintaining a healthy amount of inbound leads. Uh, it is a report that I do look at um, and quite a nice way to determine marketing effectiveness as well. If you do a certain campaign and you see a big spike in deal started, that could be a good sign. Deal progress is an interesting one. It basically shows you how many deals pass through each stage. I actually find a more useful one to be deal conversion. This is actually one of my favorite reports because it tells us a couple of things. Firstly, your overall conversion rate. So down the bottom here, I can see for this year, my conversion rate is 50%. Of all the leads that I've had in, 50% have turned into deals. Now, this does rely on you marking the deal as won or lost, which I have seen some users don't do that because they don't want their deals to be to disappear from the pipeline. They want to have that visibility. If you do that, you're not going to have any data about your won and lost deals. You're not going to have any conversion data. So you do need to be marking deals as won and lost. And so you can see your overall conversion rate. We can also see here where we're losing people in the process. So it's telling me here that two deals or 40% were lost after a proposal was made. So I'm actually learning about the weaknesses where am I losing people in this process? Again, you have to mark deals at, as lost and make sure the deals are being marked as lost at the correct stage in your sales process as well, uh, because obviously um, you want that to be accurate so you're accurately recording where people are getting to in that sales process. A quick tip is with, with the way you name your stages, because of this report, you wanna make sure you're naming them well so make sure it's really clear where deals should live. So for example, if I just said proposal, Instead of proposal made, if I just said proposal, it wouldn't actually be clear is the proposal, has it been made or do I still need to make the proposal? So I always advise making your stage naming very clear so you know what actually happened to get to that stage. So when you look at these reports, it's more meaningful. So this is, this is actually one of my one of my favorite reports. And again, you can filter this in a number of different ways. You could look at by users as well to see if certain people on your team are better or worse at converting deals. Deal velocity, just to go back one, this is just a demo account, so it's not showing that much, but it will uh, populate with data about the average number of days it takes to close a deal. So it's saying 16 days on average to close a deal. That's 29 to win, three to lose. So it takes about a month to win a deal. Um, so that's kind of telling us a little bit about, yeah, obviously the lifespan of a deal and how long it's gonna take to win. So that's an interesting one to look at. And then finally down the bottom here, deals one is obviously great. It's our overall revenue report. Um, by users, you know, or by users over time, how many deals or how, what's the value of those deals being won by my team? Who's winning more deals, who's winning less, and what does that revenue look like over time? If you have the products feature enabled in your account, you can even see a breakdown by product. So you can see things like, okay, in March, we did $10,000 of app design. June, we, we saw five of a website design and 10 of app design as well. So it's um, using the products feature is a nice way to see a little bit more detail rather than just gross revenue numbers. We can actually see the products or services that are being sold. Uh, so that is, if I click on, um, if I go to a deal, that's related to here. So I can, instead of just setting my value, I can attach a product and you can see here are the two products that I have attached that make up that one deal. So deals one, obviously, yep, very exciting report. Uh, and then finally we have deals lost. Uh, so yeah, really useful report to see why aren't we closing sales? What is the reason we're not getting them across the line? And this is where lost reasons are really important. You can customize these again in your settings. So if we go to company settings, uh, lost reasons. So here's two reasons that I've set up. Client wouldn't respond and price too high. Uh, so I could add another one. I could say maybe um, went with another option. 
And I actually always advise turning this option off, so allowing freeform entry of loss reasons. What this means is when I lose a deal, let's go back to my deals, let's go to my open deals. So if I lose a deal up here, it's going to force me to pick one of these three reasons. I can still put in comments if I want, but I can't put in a freeform entry. I think that's a good thing to do because it means in your reports uh, you have a nice consolidated list of lost reasons. So here I'm looking at my lost reasons. Rather than if you have lots of obscure little reasons, the report's going to get kind of have a long tail of random reasons. So I think it's neater to have uh, a, a, a well-defined list of lost reasons. Again, with our deals loss report, we can filter it by, re so we've got by reason, we can look at it by stage and by user as well. So there's plenty of data here that's, that allows you to learn a lot more about your sales process. You know, where are we losing deals? Why are we losing them? And then finally, if you are on the um, uh, adva the professional plan, I believe it is, you get revenue forecasting. So this shows you going forward in time, the expected revenue that you're likely to win. This is based on the expected close dates that you are setting on your deals. Um, so it actually gives you a way to forecast future revenue. Uh, so nice little extra reporting add on that you get. Now, some limitations of these reports. One of the limitations, uh, biggest limitations that I see that clients have told me about as well uh, is you cannot filter these reports by custom field. So for example, if I go to my deals, I have a custom field here called deal type and I have three types. I can't filter my reports in any way by that number. So if you do want to um, kind of analyze your data in a bit more detail, maybe analyze it by with a custom field. That's a situation where you maybe need to export the data from Pipedrive, use Excel, use something like a pivot table to do that kind of analysis. Or there are some third party tools, there's things like Power BI and Tableau and Click Clipfolio that are reporting tools that you can plug into Pipedrive to um, kind of crunch your numbers in different ways. So that's that's probably the biggest limitation that I do find. I mean Fundamentally, if you are storing your data correctly, if you have the custom fields here, there is maybe some more advanced analysis you can do with third-party tools and in Excel. Um, but I think even just understanding these basic reports will help you to get a lot more out of Pipedrive. And I hope you can see in this video, you do need to use Pipedrive in a certain way. For example, uh, moving deals and having them live in the correct stage is really important. Marking uh, deals as won and lost, which some people don't do. Recording activities is a huge one. And, uh, and finally, I didn't mention this before, but keep your deals on the correct pipeline. If you have multiple pipelines, sometimes people move them from one pipeline to the next. That's really important because it means if, uh, if, if you are picking a particular pipeline to view in these reports, if you move it from one pipeline to another, that deal will not count in that original pipeline. So if I move it here from my sales pipe, if I move a deal from the sales to my second pipeline, that deal will have no impact on the reports for the sales pipeline. So really important consideration if you are moving deals, it may be worth duplicating the deal to the new pipeline instead because it will have a big impact on reporting. So if you have any questions about that, please leave me a comment below. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.